My roommate. I'm looking at my room's ceiling and thinking, how am I going to survive in college and live with a boy? My parents, no one, know that I like boys. Hell, I didn't even know until last night. I'm still confused. Last night, I made a stupid mistake and kissed a boy, and on top of that, I liked it. Felt like something changed in my body. I mean, how am I going to tell my girlfriend that I didn't feel anything while kissing her? Oh god, I feel like not moving. They're waiting for me down, and she's there. I'm a stupid idiot, I tell myself while standing up. I'm thinking about what to do, about my newly found feelings. Should I tell my girlfriend? Of course. My inner self just shouted, fine, okay, it's gonna be fine. I drag my hand over my face and take a deep breath. Well, probably it's not a good idea to tell her about it yet. What do you mean? I mean, you aren't even sure yet, right? I question myself. I'll just wait until I'm sure. Come on, son, mom shouted. Coming, I shouted back, even though I'm halfway to the gate. My baby is going to college. As soon as she showed me, she hugged me and said yes. Mom, I said, and hugged her back. A few moments later, I let go and looked at her teary eyes. I'm just going to college, Mom, I said with a smile. Everyone goes. It's no big deal. It is, because I didn't think you'd make it, she says, wiping her tears. Ha! Ha ha! Very funny, Mom, with a fake smile. Hey, babe, Lexi says, looking at me. Hi! Tell her. She leans and kisses me. Wow. Nothing. Huh. Just like they thought. I didn't feel like I felt last night. I'm fucked. So, you're going to college, babe. Aren't you excited? Lexi says. Yes. It's a lie. Let's go. Mom says and opens the car door. I cleared my throat and said my goodbye to Lexi and take a passenger. She didn't even let Lexi finish talking and start driving. Don't fall for other girls, she shouted while waving a hand that I could see in the side mirror. Mom, that is very rude behavior, I said. Well, I don't like her, she says while grinning. You guys didn't, right? She says and waves her hand in the air over and over again. I was about to ask what when I realized what she's asking. Ew, Mom, come on, I said, looking out the window and making an ugly face. She takes her bag from the back seat and starts finding something while driving, and finally she pulls out a small rectangle box wrapped in gift paper and hands it over to me. You bought me a gift, I said, smiling. And I open it, and I'm truly shocked at what I find in that. Mom, come on. I'm looking at a condom pack. I want you to have fun, she says. There are other ways to have fun than having this, I pointed at the box that was on my lap. I'm not talking about drawings. Well, I like it. It's more fun, I said, as she pulled into the parking lot at my soon-to-be dorm for the next three years. Usually, I'm excited about college, but after this last night, I'm a little out. I didn't have much to move. I have two boxes of my drawing books and some other books that I have yet to read, and one bag for my clothes. Looking at these other people taking their whole house with them to dorm rooms, I'm relieved that I don't have much to move. I put that gift into my pockets and said goodbye to my mom and took my things out of the truck and moved to my room, which is in the middle. God, I hate it. 25. Wow. I'm looking at my hot roommate who is without a shirt and doing push-ups. He hasn't noticed me yet. I put my things down and said hi. He stands five feet from me and he offers me his hand. Hi, Rowan. Josh, I settled in while he continued his workout. It took me longer to set things right. Mostly I was looking at his muscles while he moved his body, his broad shoulders and godded his body like a Greek god fresh from heaven. I was looking at my closet. He came over and he put his long and veiny hands over my shoulder and said, Dude, that's all? I'm not very good at it. Dude, it's filled with all black. What, do you hate color or something? He asked, pointing at my clothes. You can say that, I said. And then we talked a bit, and he took me to a party when he knew that I was just going to draw. This place is filled with people, all too busy to even see us. He takes my hand and he guides me through the dance floor to the bar that's at the end. We took shots and started dancing. So close. So close, and now he's kissing a girl and I'm a little jealous about that. The music suddenly feels loud and the shots kick in and I pull him from her, to me and kiss him, so demanding, like I want him right now, on this dance floor. He pulls back from me and he looks at me with his dark brown eyes and his golden hair in my hand. He looks so good in red and blue dancing lights, and the music fades, only he remains. This is going to be so hard in the morning, but who cares? He puts one hand on my face and one on my waist, pulls me closer and kisses me with passion, hard and demanding. It's so electronic that every nerve in my body feels good and weird at the same time. We nearly knock people off the floor. I never knew that a person could feel like this. It is so amazing and I wonder what it feels like to fall in love with this energy. 
I think I might die and live at the same time. Morning comes and he forgets and I remember. Shit, this is going to be the hardest three years of my life. I kiss my new roommate. Next morning, my head feels like it's stone and it's spinning. I'm rubbing my eyes so I can get comfortable in sunlight. It happens to be so bright today and the voices of students feel so loud and I jerk my head a little. It hurts. I need to get up. It's supposed to be my first day at college and I feel like I'm still drunk. I try to look around but my hot new roommate was nowhere to be found. I find the strength to take a shower and when I come back I see Rowan sitting in his, our desk. It's a long table for both to study, holding coffee. Well, two coffees and there's a paper bag on the desk. I walked to my clothes and picked up a black shirt and jeans. The main reason that I don't have many colors is that I don't like choosing, so black seems easy to buy, in every design. When I turn back, he stands and offers me a cup. I take it and I take a sip while sitting on my bed. So, pretty rough night, he said, looking desk and tapping his index finger. Yeah, I said while checking my phone. There's still time before my first class. Thanks, no problem. Come here. I brought some donuts too, he says, looking at the empty chair beside him. And I think I'm red now. Fuck, that kiss was something else. Like something new happened to my body. There's not enough alcohol for me to forget that kiss. His soft lips against mine. His big hand on my waist. And my hair. I shake my head at last night's hot memory. I stood up and walked over to the desk to sit on the chair. I take the donut out of the bag and take a bite. I look out the window to avoid eye contact, but I can feel his eyes on me. And it's burning my skin. But I avoid it and enjoy the food. He clears his throat and turns on the chair. And puts both his elbow on the table and says while looking at the door. Do you remember what happened last night? It's all a blur. I lied. We kissed. Hmm. I don't remember anything, he says, and my heart goes still. Oh, that's all I managed to say. I'm saved by my phone, which is ringing. I reach to take my phone, and he stands and says, Well, I'm leaving for the class. See you there. Yeah, and answer my phone, which is my girlfriend. Now I have to break up. Fuck. Hi, she says over the phone. Hey, I replied. We talk for 10 minutes and it feels like 10 hours. And finally she hangs up saying, I love you, babes. I didn't say it back. I feel sorry for her and also for myself too. You have to break up soon. Very soon. I know, but it doesn't feel right to do over the phone. Just do it fine. Well, the first day was nice. I saw Rowan in class, but we didn't have time to talk. Then I never saw him again until now. And I noticed that he was wearing a simple hoodie with sweatpants. He looks nice. His sharp jawline, his soft lips, his lips, his body. Wow, he is just handsome. I'm sitting on a bench in the garden and he is walking in and towards me. I skipped the last lecture to draw. Yeah, I know it sounds foolish, but I like to draw. And the lecture was interesting, so I took a tour around the campus and found this small garden at the back of our main building. Less people were sitting there, so I sat there for an hour and drew the back of the main building. Well, I'm close to complete, but I got distracted by someone who is now standing in front of me. I look up at this muscular body, his hands are in his hoodie pocket, and even though it's almost night, he wears a cap. He narrows his eyes and I realize that my pencil and bag are on the bench and there's no space for him to sit. I gathered all my belongings and put them on the side of my feet. He sits beside me and looks at me while I close my drawing book on my lap. So, you don't like to study or what? He asked while resting his body on the bench. He relaxed. No, I like to study, but I like to draw more, I said, looking at him while he was staring at the clouds. So you like that girl you were talking to earlier? He asked. I'm surprised by this sudden question. Oh, her name is Robin. She also likes to draw, but she's not very good at it. She made an offer. Hey, buddy. One of the students came into view and waving his hand at Rowan. Hi, he says. Come on. We are getting late. He shoots for a distance. He didn't bother to come all the way here. He didn't answer, but he stood up and waved his hand at him and looked down at me and said, Well, see you in the room, he said. Enjoy drawing, he said. That while petting my head. I managed to nod and smile, trying to hide my red face. To why would you put his hand? Stupid. I was also shocked by my action. As months pass in college, I feel more and more close to him. It's become a tradition to have one meal a day with him, and I enjoy spending time with him more than anything. I would not like this place at all, which I don't, but because of him, I enjoy being here. I'm far from home, but it feels like home when I'm with him. He is so easy to talk to, and he's nice and kind to everyone. I don't like me, who only manages to smile when he's around. I've never felt this close to someone before. I'm pretty sure that he doesn't like me that way. I like him and it's become very hard to control around him. Josh just feels good. I will never forget that kiss. It felt like the world stopped around us. His body against mine and his lips, his soft curly hair in my hands. I want nothing more than to hold him like that one more time, but I will never get the chance. I wanted to tell him, but I found out that he has a girlfriend who he intends to break up with, but he has not done so yet. 
I think he doesn't like boys. That was my cue not to tell him how I feel. It would have been awkward to live with him after he rejects me, so I never told him that I like him or that I remember the kiss. But today I couldn't take it anymore. He walks into the swimming pool area where I practice after the lecture, and he walks over only in his black shorts. He's talking to a girl. I remember her. She is Robin. He spends most of the evening teaching her how to draw, and every time I see them together, I feel angry or maybe jealous too. I walked over to them and asked nicely, What are you doing here? We're here to swim. Obviously, Robin says, I don't remember I asked you. I said with a bit of annoyance. She is going to teach me how to swim in exchange for my drawing lesson, Josh says calmly. Oh, I tried to hide my emotions. After a couple of hours, she left and he stayed for some more practice. They touched each other in a manner of teaching, but I didn't like it, and I'm pretty sure she flirted with him the whole time. I jumped in the water and swam towards him. He's at the end of the water and in the corner, as always. He is resting his head on the tile and he's taken off his hat. His curly hair is wet and his whole body is wet. His shoulder is covered with little dots of water. When I walk over, he tilts his head a little and looks at me with his bright blue eyes and nice smile. How's your lesson going? I asked. Good, he says. Want to race? I said. I'm pretty sure I'm not that capable, he says with a smile, and he goes underwater and comes back, his dark curly hair on his forehead, and says, You know, I broke up with my girlfriend last night. Oh, I say, while managing not to drown. He came a little closer and I lost control. I grabbed his wrist underwater to pull him closer, and the other to his wet cheek. He gasped a little, but before he said anything, I kissed him. This time, no one is drunk. We are both aware of what we're doing, but he didn't pull away or try to break a kiss. Instead, he opened up and I smiled against his mouth and kissed him, first softly, but then I pulled him closer and kissed him deep and wanting more. He pulled away and asked me if I wanted to ask him. I thought you liked girls. Not ever since I kissed you. I saw his big smile on my face and I climbed out of the water and he followed me. Wait a minute. What? He asked in confusion as I walked over to the locker room to get dry clothes. He followed me there. Well, I thought I liked a girl, but I don't, I said while drying myself with a towel. So you like boys too? He said with a bright smile and crossed his arm. I like you, I said, looking into his sparkly eyes, which is now shocked. So you remember the kiss? He asked, narrowing his eye. Yes. And you lied? Well, because you had a girlfriend. He stood there, still not saying anything for a whole minute. And then he came close to me and kissed me. His hand on my chest and one in my hair, pulling me closer to him. He pulls away and says, wow, I know, right? I said. Then we walked to our room and we did some unholy thing that haunts my mind every day. We started dating. It's been a month since we started dating. And then suddenly his ex-girlfriend comes and starts blaming Josh for some reason that I don't understand. Last chapter. I'm getting ready for class. Rowan has already left and I hear a knock on the door, hoping for someone else. I open the door and she was there. My ex-girlfriend is here at my dorm, whom I broke over the phone with. I knew deep down she would come, but not this early. Hey, jerk bad. She punched me on the shoulder and burst into the room. This isn't working. Huh, that's all you have to say? She says angrily. Look, I'm sorry. I, I didn't want to do this over the phone, but I had to, I explained. Oh, so you can date another girl? That's why you did this, right? She shouts. No, no, that's not why. Trust me, that's not the reason, I said. Well, you should tell her the truth. But before I could say anything, she started crying, saying something like, this happens to her every time. She's not worth anything. Hey, listen, it's not your fault. Trust me, anything, it's me. I try to calm her down. How can, can you say that? You dump me over text. Ev everyone thinks that something is wrong with me. Her voice breaks when she says that. It's time, buddy. Say it before it gets worse. Look, I need to tell you something, okay? That you have a girlfriend? And also your mom is happy that we broke up, by the way. She smirks. No, and no, I don't have a girlfriend. Then why did you dumb me? She sounds irritated. Because I'm gay. There, I said it. I finally said, what are you talking about? It can't be true. We kissed and did more than kiss. She gestured between us. I know, it didn't even know back then, I said, running my hand through my hair. When did you find out, Joshy? She narrowed her eyes, biting her inner lips. At the farewell party, I... Not me, but he kissed me. That's when I realized I'm not interested in girls. Oh, really? You just kissed one boy and thought you don't like girls anymore? Wow, she said in her high-pitched voice. Well, it wasn't that easy. I thought about our time together and I felt nothing. Okay, I know this is harsh, but it's the truth, I admit it. So that's it, hmm? 
just like that. You broke my heart, she shouted. Well, you and I both know that we never really truly loved each other. You just wanted to maintain your status. I stated the fact that I knew. One of the reasons my mom didn't like her. Oh, now you want to go that road. She crosses her hand. I didn't want to, but... But you had to, right? Just like you had to break up with me. Well, like I said, I don't feel that way now. I've changed. I said harshly. Does your mom know? She asked, raising her eyebrow. I know she would bring that up. And also, I don't want to talk about it. It's not like I'm going to tell mom. It's just that I'm waiting for the right time to talk about it. No, but I will, she said coldly. When? Soon. No, no. You're going to tell her this month or I am, she said. I will when I'm ready, I said, looking at my watch. Marty, you're late for class. Well, you sound ready to me, she said. You're coming home for your mom's birthday, right? She asked, more like mocking. Yes. Why does it matter whether I tell my mom or not, I asked. It does. You see, I've got a status to maintain. She raised her eyebrow and laughed. You think this is funny? I was irritated. As you can see, this is funny. To me, I guess. She said it like it's a joke. Wow, good to know. Now you can leave, I pointed at the door. I'm not leaving until I meet your new boyfriend, she said. You're not meeting anyone. Just go. I raised my voice a little. Gee, fine. See you at the party, she said. The last part with a big mocking smile and slumped through the door behind me. Fuck, I'm screwed. I can't tell mom on her birthday and I can't do it over the phone either. You think life is going easy, but no, it's just an illusion to think. I have to think about how to tell her. Not that she'll get angry, but because I didn't tell her first. We used to share everything after my dad died. She thought it would be nice if she knew what was going on with me to help me. We have each other to rely on when shit goes down. So yeah, she would be angry if I didn't tell her first. In my defense, I didn't want to do it over the phone. Later that night, Rowan asked me why I missed a whole day of college and spent the day drawing and reading books. I told him what happened. You should have called me, he sighs. And what, makes you miss the lecture too? I said. We're sitting at the table eating dinner that he bought. I took a sip of soda and said, I need the notes. You know, I smirked. Oh, really? That's all you want from me, hmm? He teased me. So you're going to tell her on her birthday? He said while taking a bite of the sandwich. No, I'm staying for one more day, I said. He just nodded. You know, you should come down with me, I said. I mean, if you want. I can, he hesitated. I'm going to invite you, but didn't know I had to do it this early, I exclaimed. When's the birthday, he asked. Fifteen days from now, on, I replied, the 25th? Yep, on the 25th day. I was nervous throughout the ride. He tried to calm me down, but it helped a little. My mom doesn't know that I'm coming to her birthday. I told her that it's an assessment submission day. I am surprised, and also that I'm gay. I bought her the wall decor, and I don't know what Rowan bought her. I asked him, but he won't tell me. I also told him that he didn't need to buy anything, but he wouldn't listen. He said, Josh, I'm going to meet your mom on her birthday. I need to buy a gift, and I didn't argue any further. He pulled in front of my house. Here we are. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine, Rowan said petting my shoulder and kissing my hair. I take his hand and move forward to the house like I'm going to war. As soon as my mom opens the door, she hugs me, looking surprised, saying, You said you couldn't come. Well, how could I miss a beautiful mom's birthday, I said, smiling and hugging her tightly. She breaks and lets us in the house and into the crowded room. Who is this young man, she asked, eyeing Rowan. He is my friend, Rowan, I pointed at him. She puts her hand out in a manner of a handshake. He takes her hand and calls her ma'am. You can call me Anna, Mom said. Sure, ma'am. I mean, Anna. He looks more nervous than me. I smile at his humor. After my mom left, he punched my back. What's so funny about that, hmm? He whispered. Nothing, I smile again. He sighs. Hey, Joshy, a familiar voice comes behind me. What are you doing here, I whispered. Just make sure you tell Mom, she said coldly. I'm not doing this today, I snapped. Yes, you are, and if you don't, I will, she stated. She sounded serious. Before I could say anything, she disappeared in the crowd. So that's your ex-girlfriend, Joshy. Rowan smirks. Don't call me that, I ordered, knowing he would do it again. Joshy doesn't like that, he said with a big smile on his face. No, I don't. I hate it. It's a cute name. No, it's gross, I snapped. How about I call you Rowy? No, you're right. It does sound gross. Then we went to grab some beers. I drink two whole cups of it. I'm about to drink my third cup, but then she snatched it from me and said, You don't want to be drunk while you speak to your mom. How do you know? I asked. I just know, okay? Just talk to her. He is right. I don't want to sound drunk when I talk to her. I spotted her in the kitchen alone. This is your time to talk to her. I took a deep breath and went to the kitchen. Hey, mom. 
Can I talk to you for a sec? Sure. What's wrong? She looked at me with serious eyes. Nothing's wrong. I just wanted... You're scaring me, son. Here there are no big words. Just that. Mom, I'm gay. I said it. What? I'm gay, mom. Are you sure? She asked if I'm drunk. I know it sounds a bit too much, but it's true, I replied. So she pointed at the hall. Yes. I know what she's trying to say. He is my boyfriend. We started dating two months ago, and also we live in the same room, I explained. Really? I knew it. She crosses her hand. Wait, what? I knew something was going on between you two, she said. How? Just call it mom's magic, she narrows her eyes. Oh, really? I widened my eyes. Well, then what's that girl doing here? She... I thought you invited her. And you're not mad at me? I asked. What for? Being gay? Nah, I'm just happy that you're happy and finally found something that makes you happy. So no, I'm not mad. Well, I'm mad that you didn't tell me first, but I understand. Change of feeling is not easy to talk about, so I'm just glad that you told me before getting married, she said. The last part a bit dramatically. Thank you, I hugged her and said. We spent the night together and decided to leave tomorrow. She opened every gift and finally I got to see what he bought. He's more thoughtful than I am. He bought her a vintage camera which looked expensive and it was. We dated throughout the whole college and after that too. There were ups and downs but we made it together. So yeah, I'm in love with my roommate. The end. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become part of our rainbow force and stay wholesome.